Yo, the race on central bank digital currencies is in full swing. And China has already leaps ahead with their development on DCEP. And it's the first digitized version of a national currency that is going to be rolled out at scale as we speak. And this is a big deal because they have access to more than 1 billion users like this, right, within a snap. That's why it's getting inherently important for nations, but also entire economic zones like Europe, for example, to catch up with China in order to remain competitive. So in today's video, I want to share my research and my learnings and findings on one specific project that proposes the FED a rollout of a digital currency powered by blockchain technology in collaboration with one of my favorite crypto projects out there, Hedera Hashgraph. So in today's video, I'll be talking about that. And if you're excited about that, if you want to learn about this, then make sure you hit up the subscribe button to my channel, number one. Number two, like this video, comment this video, and number three, share it with one or two friends. And having that said, also make sure that you watch this entire thing. All right, so first things first, 2019 and 2020 have been important years for the development of central bank digital currencies. In 2019, we all know the bomb dropped when Facebook announced the Libra Association, which was this um, white paper that explained how Facebook or how Libra led by Facebook wants to build a blockchain architecture in order to drive forth financial inclusion of the unbanked, of the underbanked, right? And obviously Facebook has more than, I don't know, two, three billion users. So it's pretty easy for them to just roll it out at scale. And it was very controversial immediately um, on, a, on a national and regulatory level because they felt threatened from the private sector that they would want to replace the national currency, the US dollar, right? And in that white paper explained to be um, working on a blockchain layer that um, builds or enables a stable coin that is backed by a basket of national currencies, right? Like the Swiss franc, like the euro, like the US dollar, right? So Libra actually understands that they don't want to compete with the national currency. They rather want to complete it. And they also want to accelerate the um, digital currency development, right? And the innovation of digital currencies. Why do they do that? Well, they do that because China has been working on it since 2014. And right when the Libra white paper dropped, right, which was still basically in the midst of a crypto bear market, China came out immediately and started to push hard on their digital yuan initiative, right? So it was actually a direct response to Libra, which China sees as, you know, it comes from the United States. And China basically said, okay, we're going to roll out DCEP early 2020, right? And then it went really, really fast. Um, DCEP actually rolled out in four major cities, right? Um, a lot of big merchants were also involved in that rollout, like I think Burger King and McDonald's and, and big chains, right? Basically replaces current big players in the market like Alipay and WeChat Pay, right? They currently have more than 1 billion users. So the Chinese central bank has really, really easy access to 1 billion users because they can simply replace Alipay and WeChat Pay. And the people there are already used to it, right? Now, the big question is, can the West catch up with that pace that China has, right? Can we catch up with that here in Europe? I think we're light years away from that. We're still, I think in October 2020 uh, was the first time when the ECB officially said, okay, guys, now we're going to start working on it. A bit late, I would say, a little bit late to the party. And what do you have in the US? Well, the US has actually been incredibly deliberate on their plans of rolling out a digital uh, dollar, right? And they have also been a bit late to the party when it comes to that. But Facebook or the Libra Association, which is now called DM, by the way, they have really, really pushed hard on that and really caused a lot of chaos also for regulators, because that was the first time, I guess, that they really had to start to dig deep into that and to really understand what is Bitcoin all about? What is blockchain all about? What is decentralized ledger technology all about? And why? What, what plans might China have with their DCEP, right? Now, fast forward to early 2021. It was actually the first time that Jerome Powell, the chair of the Fed, said, guys, this year, we're going to roll it out. We're going to roll it out. We're even going to engage the public into that, right? We're going to engage the public. He said it just a few weeks ago. We're going to engage the public. The digital dollar is coming. Brace, because this thing is going to come this year. So the big question now is, which projects 
are working on that? Which projects is the Fed also consulting, right? Because they have to get access to technical experts, to technical people in that field, right? To better understand how can we also uh, not just build a database that, you, you know, we can launch a digital dollar. That's actually easy. But also, how can we uh, roll it out? How can we have it interoperable, right? There's a lot of questions that go with it. And you need to consult um, the public and also the private sector. And one very interesting initiative in that field has been a project called Project New Dawn, which is led by MTech, a technology a startup based out of the US. And what Project New Dawn basically proposes is a blockchain-based architecture that is built on Ethereum at the beginning. And it's built as a permissioned network, meaning that there's a central Uh, central uh, concentration of nodes that can basically govern and uh, moderate the network. And that's probably going to be what all central banks around the world are going to implement is very private permissioned networks and architectures, right? Because they obviously don't want to give away control, right? And in the paper, they say that, look, guys, initially we're going to be built on Ethereum, but we have a very close collaborator and that is Hedera Hashgraph. And guys, I've been talking about Hedera Hashgraph for months now. And it's one of my favorite projects out there because it has very high level connections also in the governance council, obviously. And they currently also upgraded from 16 to 18 nodes. So it's basically getting more and more decentralized over the next years, probably over the next decades. It's a very slow transition. And obviously right now it's still quite centralized, but over the time they are going to be fully decentralized, right? Now, what they're saying is, Look, Hedera Hashgraph has built this amazing new um, consensus algorithm that provides scalability, and they're also launching products that enable interoperability, right? Because it's one thing to be scalable within an ecosystem. It's another thing to be compatible with other ecosystems, right? And also here, China is still leading, in my opinion, because they have the blockchain service network which is this architecture that connects all other public chains already to date. And it is led by Chinese telecommunications companies, right? That is huge, guys. So what is the US counterpart to that? The US counterpart to that could be something like Project New Dawn. It could be something that comes from the private sector, from a lot of experienced people in that field and the CEO of MTech, which we're going to look into in a second. All right, so we if we take a look at their website, projectnewdawn.info, we can see that that's actually exactly their sales pitch, right? Over 60 million people either don't have or find it too expensive to use a bank account. Over 1 trillion of economic stimulus might not reach them because of that. They have a crazy idea because printing cash is expensive, manual and slow. We could digitize it and send it directly to people in minutes, right? Fast, secure, low cost, interoperable, right? So they're introducing a modern cash infrastructure Hashtag CBDC for inclusion. And what they're proposing in their working paper um, is that they want to call uh, what, what they call a digital cash blockchain, right? And the digital cash blockchain, like I said, initially is going to be built on Ethereum, but we might see more components of Hedera Hashgraph in the future. You can read the paper here, by the way. And um, yeah, their, their hypothesis is that the digital cash infrastructure built with central bank digital currency can directly fill the inclusion gap, right? That's the main sales pitch. And that's actually exactly what we're talking about also in the crypto space is that Bitcoin can fix that too, right? And the team or basically the advisors, because that's just the project which is funded and sponsored and uh, uh, led by MTech is also from most of these people, right? So you have Carmel Cadet, which is the founder and CEO of MTech, right? Former uh, IBM, and she has extensive blockchain uh, knowledge. Then you have Barbara Bickham. She was managing director of uh, Women Innovation Fund and uh, blockchain CTO. And then another very important and I think uh, interesting uh, person in that team is Diane R. Maurice. She's an advisor to Amtech and she's a former Federal Reserve of New York and San Francisco, right? Like that is huge. That is a very important um, connection that Amtech and Project New Dawn has directly to the Federal Reserve. You know, because that's exactly what you need if you want to propose something to them, right? You need to have also the connections and the network to them. Then you have um, Evgeny Mitkov, who is the CTO of Amtech. And then you have um, um, MBA professor at New York University, Dr. Haran Segram. And then you have Natasha, who is co-founder 
and COO at Dark Matter Constellation. So she's probably more in the um, crypto slash finance sector, right? Now, their mission um, is clear, right? They want to build um, a digital cash architecture that delivers technical reference, but also regulatory and legislative recommendations to reach the underbanked, right? And having people like that on board obviously helps a lot with that initiative, right? Now, they're working in collaboration with MTech, which is the tech arm and the development arm and the main company behind it. Now, they also work with them as uh, Microsoft. And I read the paper. It's actually not like they're not working on, on the operations, I guess, but um, Microsoft helped them um, by providing a free access to Azure, right? So building this on Azure, actually. And um, they're just giving them free access to their services. But I don't think that there's actually a, a workforce from Microsoft dedicated to work on this. I haven't done my research on that yet, but I didn't find it in the paper. So I'm just assuming that, you know, it, they're, they're getting support from them, but they're not actively working on it. Whereas with Hedera, they're actually working together. And I guess Hedera is also consulting them when it comes to technicalities, when it comes to building the technical framework and architecture. And that is something that I'm personally very excited about because obviously I'm also holding HBAR, right? So I definitely have a financial interest that this thing succeeds and Hedera will be the main platform behind all this. But um, just seeing that they're jointly researching on this is in my opinion already super cool. Now, if we go on the website of MTech, then we can see that their cur uh, current main focus is modernizing central banking, right? So they want to deploy a software services that uh, promote financial inclusion, innovation, but also resilience, right? And resilience, they're referring here to as being resilient as a payment uh, currency, right? As a form of money, but I also think resilience to other international or foreign currencies that try to expand into other regions like the United States, for example, right? Because it might be that one day there's going to be more economic incentive to use DCEP instead of our own national currency, right? So that is also what I alluded to earlier. The race on digital currencies is on and um, you have to be resilient as a nation in that as well, right? Because otherwise you get eaten up, you get eaten up. Now, they have this thing, what they call the modern central bank sandbox platform, which is still in beta. And you can actually um, apply for, for it to join, or I, I'm not sure how you get, get into that, but uh, it's probably a close circle of regulators, innovators, and large institutions to figure out a way how can we elevate central banking to the next level, to the digital era, right? So this is pretty cool. Um, and um, apparently, this is the, the, the very interesting thing, apparently, the current engagement model and models include the U.S. Federal Reserve, right? So apparently the U.S. is already collaborating with them. Probably it's still very early research um, collaborations that they have going on, but um, that's what they call the Project New Dawn. So I guess they're just researching on ways. How can they roll this out? What is required from the Fed? What do they want, right? I guess that's probably the first question. Like, what does the Fed actually want? because there's different concept of central bank digital currencies. And, um, and then MTEC is trying to propose a solution to that. Now, in the end of the day, whether or not that's gonna be implemented is a whole different animal, right? It's a whole different question. But so that's one thing. The second thing is the Central Bank of Bahamas. And you might think now, uh, who cares about the Bahamas, right? It's like 400,000 people. But it's actually the first nation around the world that has a fully live central bank digital currencies already in the play and that's called the cent dollar right that launched in october of 2020 and uh, this is cool because you can here actually have a live version of a central bank digital currency and also you have best practices lessons learned that you can then also pitch to to the us fed right to the us federal reserve you can tell them like hey guys these guys has le has le have learned from this and we're working with them so we propose this right based on what they figured out so this is interesting definitely very very interesting you can also read uh, some media announcements there and other stuff and uh, obviously mtech is collaborating with hedera hashgraph which is why i'm super bullish on hbar the coin of hedera hashgraph because if things like that get if things like that get public at scale people are just going to buy hbar right it's just 
that's how it is. It's it's very simple. Now, it's still very early to determine anything here. This is still early research. Um, but I really encourage you to to read about that, to put this on your ma uh, on your uh, radar, to put this on your map, and also to um, you know keep an eye and ear open um, because probably in the future we're going to see something coming out. Now, for those who do not know what Hedera Hashgraph is, it's a directed acyclic graph technology, so it's not a blockchain, but a DAG. I think the more I read about it, actually, I think is the future of decentralized ledger technology. And just a few weeks ago, they actually launched the Hedera token service, which is something I didn't find in the Project New Dawn papers. So I guess the papers are from mid or late 2020 because the Hedera token service is brand new, right? And the Hedera token service is brand new. And Jerome Powell said just two weeks ago that now we're going to ro roll something out very soon and the public is going to be involved. This could be something that they might even be, be using, right? Um, well, the Hedera Governance Council, which is something I already said, is governed uh, by by leading organizations from all around the world, right? You have Boeing, LG, you have uh, Deutsche Telekom, Standard Bank, which just added a note actually, Swirls, which is the company of Dr. Lehman Bird and uh, Mans Harman, the founders of Hedera Hashgraph, is the technical arm behind all it, right? It's the company that developed and also patented the Hashgraph algorithm, DLA Piper. You have all these organizations from all around the world, Tata Communications, there's even rumors um, from the Central Bank of India, right? Um, the RBI to work on a CBDC together with uh, Hedera through Tata, right? Tata is a huge, huge company in, in India. It's one of the largest companies there. It's a multi-national um, uh, uh, organization, really, really huge. Google, IBM, right? And Zain and uh, Vipro, huge companies there. Yeah, if you want to learn more about the ABFT consensus algorithm, about um, HBAR and about all the tokenomics and network services and blah, 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 feel free to read about it. They currently have 130,000 accounts on the mainnet and process around 7. 2 million transactions per day. I think Bitcoin currently processes around 300 and Ethereum around, I don't know, 1 point something million. So HBAR is very much uh, used right now. Now I haven't done research on the nature of those transactions, but given that there's a small fee involved in it, it would be actually very, really stupid to fake those transactions. So, um, because you would always have to pay for it, right? It doesn't make sense. But yeah, 7.2 million is pretty, pretty cool. And they have 100, 500 plus teams building on Hedera already, right? Uh, Coupon Bureau, AD, uh, Ad Stacks, um, Acor, like different sectors, media, healthcare, retail, tele telecommunications. Now, there hasn't been any official statement from Hedera Hashgraph or any sort of uh, paper or any sort of um, media piece yet. At least I haven't found it. If you have something, then please share it with me. Post it under this video. But it's pretty cool. Um, because I think we're still very early in this and just talking about this and researching about this and going down that rabbit hole, you can already evaluate for yourself. Um, that's basically what I'm doing. What is my, what is my game plan here? And obviously right now, as Bitcoin is actually, uh, heading towards 60 K we're seeing that Hedera Hashgraph is, um, about to enter the top 50, right? Currently at 25.8 cents. Um, I think it has uh, touched upon 27 even a uh, few few uh, hours ago, right? So 27.5 cents was like the peak a few hours ago. And uh, I mean, it looks like there's some resistance here, but this thing has gone off the races already. I mean, I started talking about it, I don't know, I mean, November, December. Um, personally, I, I've been buying a lot in December and um, it's been a wild ride since then. So this might also be smart money now moving into that, right? Because HBAR doesn't didn't have that crazy hype on crypto Twitter within the crypto community. There was nothing that I can recall which caused a massive buy wave from retail. This might just be smart money moving in, anticipating something big, right? And that's why I'm holding off, even though I made now substantial profits here, almost a 10x with a coin that is, you know, supposed to be slow and and and, and boring. But um, uh, it's just like entering the, the the big player fields, right? It's just entering the, the top 20 here probably uh, very soon. That's basically what I'm looking at. I said in my previous video that I don't know why Hedera is not in the top 20 because 
reading, 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 reading and researching about it, I really feel that this is huge. And sure, the technology still have to prove has to prove itself. It's already basically live under main uh, mainnet conditions and um, real world conditions, but it's still a very phased and smooth and cautious rollout, right? So, and that's actually what I think you have to do, right? Cardano has done it, Polkadot has done it, Ethereum is doing it. How you can basically slowly transition from a centralized platform and ecosystem to a decentralized one at scale, right? That also is getting deployed a lot in the uh, economy and in this uh, digital economy that we're living in. So having that said, let me know your thoughts. I don't think this, this is going to be um, in the sense for long, um, just my opinion, but um, I think this is going to hit one, two, three, five dollars even this run. That's my thoughts. That's my evaluation because a lot of people ask me in no way or shape or form do I think that you should buy now because I said it especially you don't want to buy the peak right probably there's going to be a consolidation here now to 20 cents or whatever before it keeps going up again but um uh, i don't really care i mean i'm I, I think long term this is going to do extremely well from an investment perspective and also the the entire ecosystem and uh, deployment so let me know what you think on hedera um, uh, and um, yeah, having that said, I guess next week is going to be huge. Stick around on my channel, subscribe to my channel, like this video also, share it with some friends, raise some more awareness on that, also on central bank digital currencies as a whole. I think it's going to be a predominant narrative for this year as well, um, as we see more and more nations rolling out their central, uh, central bank digital currencies. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the next one. Be good and stay healthy. <laughs>